I've been asked multiple times to explain how I control this Windows computer from my Mac or control a Ubuntu computer from my Mac or control another Mac from my Mac or control a Mac from Windows, et cetera, et cetera. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to run VNC on a Windows 10 laptop. I'm gonna show you how to remotely connect to a Mac and control it using VNC. Now, originally I was planning to show you the installation of VNC on an Ubuntu server, but the video got too long, so I've split it into two parts. In this first video, I'm gonna show you how to install and configure VNC on a Windows computer so that you can remotely control it. I'll also show you how you can do something similar on a Mac so that you can control a Mac from another Mac or from a Windows computer. And in the next video, I'll show you how to configure Ubuntu so that you can remotely control it using VNC, either from a Windows computer or from a Mac. Now, please be aware that there are issues using VNC to do this. This is probably not the solution that you want if you want to remotely control your devices from outside your home network. So if you're traveling and you wanna remotely control your devices, unless you've set up a VPN to your local router, you probably don't wanna use this. You probably wanna use some other solution. There are many applications out there such as TeamViewer that allow you to remotely control your computer from outside your network. But if you just want a simple solution to control devices in your home network as an example, VNC can work quite well. VNC has been around for years. In this video as an example, I demonstrated the use of VNC to control a Windows 98 computer from a Mac. So in other words, this has been around for a long time quick and easy solution if you want to remotely control a device, have a graphical user interface, for instance, to control Ubuntu rather than using SSH. Okay, let's get started. In this example, I'm going to show you how to use tight VNC. So in my example, I'm going to download the installer for Windows 64-bit. If you've got a 32-bit version of Windows, you could download the 32-bit version of the software. You could also use the Java version if you really want to. Wouldn't recommend that. But as you can see here, the software has downloaded. It's a very small file, 2.4 meg in size. I'm gonna double click on the MSI file. Windows complains that the software wasn't downloaded from the Microsoft Store. I'm okay with that, so I'm gonna click Install anyway. The tight VNC setup wizard displays. Fairly simple wizard. We're gonna go with the defaults mainly. Click Next. Software is licensed under the GNU General Public License. If you're happy with the license, click Next. I'm gonna select Typical Installation, click Next, and click Install. And there you go, that's basically the installation. One thing you do wanna do is set passwords. So set the password for accessing the VNC server, and then configure an administrator password. Now, please note, VNC isn't that secure. Traffic is sent in clear text, so you probably don't want to use this across the public internet unless you tunnel this within an SSH session. So only use this on a private network where you can trust that your traffic isn't going to be captured. Some of the information is sent in clear text, so be careful of that. You probably want to encrypt this. I'm going to click OK and click Finish. Okay, so VNC is now installed. Let's see if I can control it from my Mac. Now, one thing we wanna make sure about is the IP address on the VNC server. In this example, it's 192.168.1.132. If I right click on the server, I can have a look at the configuration, put in my admin password, and I'll be able to change some of the settings. So as an example, I can specify which port number is used. I can specify whether web access is allowed change the primary password or the view only password. I can specify extra ports and specify access control. Again, VNC isn't that secure, so you probably wanna lock down who can have access to the VNC server. So restrict IP addresses in this list. And you could click OK to save those settings. Okay, so once again, IP address is 192.168.1.132. Okay, so let's see if I can control that laptop from my Mac. On my Mac, I'm gonna open up screen sharing. Connect to the IP address, 192.168.1.132. I'm asked to enter my password, which I'll do. And notice I can now control 
that laptop from my Mac. As an example, I'll open up Notepad. And as you can see there, Notepad is open on the laptop as well as on my Mac. Open up a web browser. And notice I'm connected to the VNC website once again. Okay, so now let's look at how to enable remote desktop on a Mac. In this example, I'm using macOS Big Sur version 11.01. What I'm gonna do is search for system preferences, go to sharing, screen sharing, make sure that this is checked. Specify in this example that only administrators can access this device. Notice we told here that other users can access the computer screen at VNC 192.168.187 or by looking for the name of the laptop. I'm gonna select computer settings and I can specify whether I wanna allow anyone to request permission to control the screen. And VNC users may control the screen using the following password. I'll specify a password there and I'll click close. Okay, so the Mac configuration is fairly simple. On this Mac, I'm gonna open up my screen sharing application the IP address on this Mac is 192.168.1.87. So I'll simply use the IP address to connect to the Mac, so 192.168.1.87. I'm asked to enter my username and my password. And notice I can now control this Mac from that Mac. So as an example, I could open up a browser and go to davidbomble.com as an example. I'm controlling this MacBook from that Mac. Okay, so on Windows, I'm gonna search for tight VNC viewer. IP address is 192.168.187. Before I connect, I'm gonna go to options. I'm gonna uncheck full screen mode. And in this example, because this is a small computer, I'm gonna set the display to auto and click OK. And click connect. Put in my password. And notice now I can control that Mac from my Windows laptop. So I could close this down. I could close the web browser down. I'm once again controlling the Mac from Windows using VNC. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to get VNC working on Windows computers and on Macs, and how you can control a Mac from a Windows computer or a Windows computer from a Mac. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to get VNC installed and working on an Ubuntu computer, and how you can control the Ubuntu computer from Windows or a Mac. I'm David Bumble, wanna wish you all the very best.